John Benet Patricia Ramsey, born August 6, 1990, was a young American beauty queen tragically killed at the tender age of six in her family's residence at 755 15th Street in Boulder, Colorado. A lengthy handwritten ransom note was discovered within the home. It was John Benet's father, John, who uncovered her lifeless body in the basement approximately seven hours following her reported disappearance. The autopsy revealed a fractured skull from a severe blow to the head, coupled with strangulation, marked by a garrot wrapped around her neck. The official cause of John Bennett's demise was declared as asphyxiation due to strangulation associated with cranial trauma. This devastating event was classified as a homicide. The case garnered widespread global attention, notably due to her mother, Patsy Ramsey, a former beauty queen who had engaged John Bonet in various child beauty pageants. Despite extensive efforts, the case remains unsolved, with the Boulder Police Department continuing its open investigation. Initially, the Boulder Police suspected Patsy of composing the ransom note and believed that John Bonet's parents had orchestrated a staged scene to conceal the murder. By 1999, both the police and the district attorney confirmed that John Bonet's nine-year-old brother, Burke, was not a suspect. While John Bonet's parents participated in televised interviews, they avoided police questioning except on their own terms. In October 2013, previously sealed court documents unveiled that a grand jury from 1999 had recommended charging the Ramseys for allowing John Bonet to be in a perilous situation. Additionally, John and Patsy were accused of impeding the prosecution of an unidentified individual responsible for first degree murder and fatal child abuse. Nonetheless, the district attorney concluded that there was insufficient evidence to pursue a viable indictment. In 2002, the district attorney's successor assumed control of the case from the police and primarily pursued the theory of an intruder perpetrating the crime. By 2003, trace DNA extracted from the victim's garments was discovered to belong to an unidentified male, with each member of the family excluded from this genetic match. In 2008, the district attorney issued a letter of apology to the Ramseys, affirming the family's full exoneration based on the DNA findings. However, some, including former Boulder Police Chief Mark Beckner, contested the exoneration, viewing the DNA evidence as inconclusive and lacking a direct link to the crime. In February 2009, the Boulder Police reassumed control of the investigation from the district attorney and reopened the case. The national and international media extensively covered John Bonet's brief involvement in beauty pageants, along with her family's affluence and the peculiar evidence uncovered in the case. Media scrutiny questioned the police's handling of the investigation. Consequently, members of the Ramsey family and their acquaintances initiated defamation lawsuits against various media entities. John Bonet Ramsey entered the world on August 6, 1990, in Atlanta, Georgia, as the younger of two siblings to Patricia Patsy Ramsey and John Bennett Ramsey. Her older brother, Burke, preceded her by three years. John Bonet's unique first name was a fusion of her father's first and middle names, while her mother's first name was bestowed upon her as her middle name. John Ramsey, a businessman, held the position of president at Access Graphics, a computer software company later acquired by Lockheed Martin. Following his divorce in 1978, John embarked on a new chapter in 1991, marrying Patsy, his second wife, and relocating with their family to Boulder, where Access Graphics had its headquarters. Patsy Ramsey, a dedicated homemaker, poured her energy into caring for her children. She enthusiastically supported John Bonet's participation in various child beauty pageants in Boulder, where John Bonet earned titles such as America's Royale Miss, Little Miss Charlevoix, Little Miss Colorado, Colorado State All-Star Kids Cover Girl, and National Tiny Miss Beauty. Media attention heightened following John Bonet's tragic murder, focusing on her involvement in pageants and Patsy's described pageant mother demeanor. On December 23, 1993, three days before the discovery of the body, a 911 call originates from the home. However, by January 10th, it's revealed that the call was likely a mistake made by an inebriated party guest. On December 25, 1996, John Bonet receives a bicycle for Christmas. Following a Christmas gathering hosted by family friend Fleet White, the Ramseys return home, and John Bonet retires to bed. 
Some theories suggest that John Bonet sneaked downstairs later and had a disagreement with her brother over a late night snack of pineapple. Indeed, undigested pineapple was found in her stomach. At 5.30 a.m. on December 26, 1996, when Patsy rises to prepare coffee, she discovers a two-and-a-half-page handwritten ransom note on the back stairs leading to the kitchen. The note claims her daughter has been abducted and demands, you will withdraw $118,000 from your account. $100,000 will be in $100 bills and the remaining $18,000 in $20 bills. On December 26, 1996, Patsy Ramsey informed authorities that she discovered her daughter missing upon finding a two-and-a-half-page handwritten ransom note on the kitchen staircase of the Ramsey family's Boulder residence. Police! What's going on? 555 15th Street. What's going on there, ma'am? We have a kidnapping. Hurry, right, please. Explain to me what's going on, okay? There's a note left and our daughter's gone. There's a, there's a ransom note here. Oh my God, please. Okay, please, well, somebody. I am, honey. Please. Take a deep breath. Please, me, okay? hurry, hurry, hurry. Patsy, 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 Patsy. The note demanded a sum of us $118,000. John Ramsey noted to the police at the scene that this amount closely mirrored his Christmas bonus from the previous year, suggesting potential involvement from someone privy to such information. Investigators explored various theories regarding the amount requested, including scrutiny of Access Graphics employees who might have been aware of John's bonus. Additionally, they investigated the possibility of the ransom demand referencing Psalm 118 consulting religious sources for insight. The ransom note's unusual length prompted the FBI to inform the police that such notes were rarely written at the scene of the crime. Law enforcement suspected the note of being staged due to its lack of fingerprints besides Patsy's and those of the authorities who handled it. Moreover, its peculiar use of exclamation marks and initialisms raised suspicions. Both the note and a practice draft were penned using materials from the Ramsey household. While a Colorado Bureau of Investigation CBI report suggested Patricia Ramsey as the likely author, the evidence did not conclusively support this claim. Forensic pathologist Michael Baden, with six decades of experience and consultation on both sides of the case, deemed the note highly unusual and doubted it was authored by an unknown individual. A federal court dismissed the likelihood of Patsy's involvement in writing the note, citing the findings of six certified handwriting experts. The court criticized the baseless accusations made against Patsy by self-proclaimed experts lacking credentials, emphasizing the absence of scientific validity in their claims. On the fateful night of John Bonet's passing, only her immediate family, Patsy, John Ramsey, and their son Burke, were known to be inside the residence. Despite specific instructions in the ransom note against reaching out to authorities or acquaintances, Patsy disregarded this directive, contacting the police at 5.52 a.m. She also reached out to family and friends. Responding swiftly, two police officers arrived at the Ramsey home within three minutes of the 911 call. Though they conducted a brief search of the premises, no evidence of forced entry was discovered. During the search, Officer Rick French encountered a door in the basement secured by a wooden latch. After a moment's pause, he chose not to open it. French later clarified that he suspected this door might serve as an exit route for the abductor but its sealed condition dismissed this possibility. With John Bonet still missing, John began arrangements to meet the ransom demands. Concurrently, a forensics team was dispatched to the residence. Initially presuming a kidnapping, the team cordoned off John Bonet's bedroom to preserve potential evidence. Unfortunately, no precautions were taken to prevent contamination elsewhere in the house. Meanwhile, friends, victim advocates, and the Ramsey family's minister arrived to offer support. Regrettably, these visitors inadvertently disturbed and cleaned surfaces in the kitchen, potentially compromising evidence. Boulder detective Linda Arndt arrived around 8 a.m., awaiting further instructions, but no attempt was made by anyone to claim the ransom money. At 1 p.m., Detective Arndt enlisted John Ramsey and Fleet White, a family friend, to conduct a thorough search of the house for any signs of unusual activity. They commenced their search in the basement. John, upon opening the previously overlooked latched door, made the grim discovery of his daughter's lifeless body in one of the rooms. John Bonet was found with duct tape covering her mouth, a nylon cord encircling her wrists and neck, and her torso concealed beneath a white blanket. John carefully moved the child's body upstairs, 
inadvertently further contaminating the crime scene and disturbing crucial forensic evidence for the forthcoming forensics team. Subsequently, each member of the Ramsey family provided handwriting, blood, and hair samples to the authorities. John and Patsy endured a preliminary interview lasting over two hours, while Burke underwent questioning within the initial weeks following John Benet's passing. The autopsy findings revealed that John Benet succumbed to strangulation coupled with a skull fracture, with the official cause of death cited as asphyxia by strangulation associated with craniocerebral trauma. While no conventional signs of rape were present, the possibility of sexual assault couldn't be definitively ruled out. Although no semen was detected, evidence indicated a vaginal injury, with indications that the paintbrush used in the garrote had also been involved in the assault. The pathologist noted during the autopsy that John Benet's vaginal area appeared to have been wiped with a cloth, confirming the ruling of homicide. A garrote crafted from nylon cord and the broken handle of a paintbrush was found encircling John Benet's neck, seemingly employed in her strangulation. While part of the paintbrush was recovered from a tub containing Patsy's art supplies, the bottom portion remained elusive despite thorough searches of the house by law enforcement in subsequent days. Furthermore, the autopsy disclosed the presence of vegetable or fruit material, possibly pineapple, consumed by Jean Benet a few hours before her demise. Photographs captured on the day John Benet's body was discovered displayed a bowl of pineapple on the kitchen table with an accompanying spoon. However, neither John nor Patsy recalled placing the bowl on the table or feeding John Benet pineapple. Police reported discovering the fingerprints of John Benet's nine year old brother, Burke Ramsey, on the bowl. The Ramseys maintained that Burke slept undisturbed throughout the night until roused several hours after the police arrived. In December 2003, Forensic experts managed to extract sufficient material from a mixed blood sample discovered on John Benet's underwear to establish a DNA profile. This DNA profile belonged to an unidentified male individual and did not match the DNA of any member of the Ramsey family. The DNA sample was subsequently entered into the FBI's combined DNA index system, CODIS, a repository housing over 1.6 million DNA profiles. However, no match was found within the database. In October 2016, a report revealed that new forensic analysis, employing more sensitive techniques, uncovered genetic markers from two individuals other than Jean Benet within the original DNA sample. James Kohler, a lead investigator for the DA's office, disclosed that additional traces of male DNA were found on the cord and paintbrush, which Boulder District Attorney Mary Lacey had not mentioned. Furthermore, Six distinct DNA samples belonging to unidentified individuals were discovered during the testing process. Former FBI profiler Candace DeLong asserts that the presence of identical DNA in multiple locations across various surfaces strongly indicates the involvement of the perpetrator. Bob Grant, a former Adams County, Colorado district attorney who has assisted the Boulder DA's office in the case, echoes this sentiment, emphasizing the significance of the DNA evidence. He emphasizes that any resolution to the case must account for how the DNA appeared on multiple articles of John Benet's clothing. However, forensic pathologist Michael Baden cautions that trace amounts of DNA can inadvertently transfer onto surfaces and clothing through various innocuous means. Various experts, media pundits, and the Ramseys themselves have put forth potential suspects in the John Benet Ramsey case. Initially, the Boulder police primarily scrutinized John and Patsy Ramsey. However, by October 1997, their list of persons of interest had expanded to over 1,600 individuals. Numerous errors marred the initial investigation, complicating efforts to resolve the case and establish a viable theory. These missteps included the loss and contamination of crucial evidence, inadequate staffing with experienced technical personnel, sharing of evidence with the Ramses, and delayed informal interviews with the parents. In early 1997, Retired Detective Lou Smith joined forces with the Boulder County District Attorney's Office to aid in the investigation. By May 1998, Smith, alongside other DA staff members, presented their findings to the Boulder Police, concluding that the evidence pointed away from the Ramseys. Despite their efforts, they struggled to sway the police department's entrenched belief in the Ramseys' guilt. Consequently, the DA's office sought to assume control of the investigation leading to friction between the police and the DA's office. 
due to the escalating tension and the imperative to secure a conviction, Colorado Governor Roy Romer intervened, appointing Michael Kane as special prosecutor to convene a grand jury. Conflicting perspectives among the lead investigators further complicated matters. Both Lou Smith and Steve Thomas eventually resigned from their positions. Smith, due to his conviction that the investigation had negligently overlooked the intruder hypothesis and Thomas because of perceived interference from the DA's office and a lack of support for the police investigation. A grand jury convened on September 15, 1998, to deliberate over indictments against the Ramseys related to John Bonet's case. In 1999, the grand jury returned a true bill recommending charges against the Ramseys for endangering the child's welfare in a manner leading to her demise and for obstructing the murder investigation, citing John Ramsey's interference with the crime scene. However, Boulder County District Attorney Alex Hunter opted not to prosecute, citing insufficient evidence to meet the stringent standard of proof beyond a reasonable doubt required for criminal conviction. Subsequently, Mary Lacey assumed control of the investigation from the police on December 26, 2002. In April 2003, she concurred with a federal judge's assessment in a 2002 libel case that evidence presented was more consistent with a theory of an intruder murdering John Bonet than with the theory of Mrs. Ramsey's involvement. On July 9, 2008, the Boulder District Attorney's Office, citing advancements in DNA sampling and testing techniques, touch DNA analysis, announced the exclusion of Ramsey family members as suspects and publicly exonerated them. However, on February 2, 2009, Boulder Police Chief Mark Beckner disclosed that Stan Garnett, the new Boulder County District Attorney, would lead the case, with his team resuming investigation. Garnett determined that the statute of limitations for the crime specified in the 1999 grand jury. True Bill had lapsed, thus declining to pursue charges against the Ramseys. In October 2010, the Boulder Police reopened the cold case conducting new interviews following a fresh inquiry by a committee comprising state and federal investigators. Despite expectations of leveraging the latest DNA technology, no new insights were gleaned from these interviews. As of September 2016, Boulder Police Chief Greg Testa affirmed that John Bonet's death remains an active homicide case. In 2015, Beckner expressed dissent regarding the exoneration of the Ramseys, deeming it absurd to absolve anyone based on a lone piece of evidence yet to be definitively linked to the crime. He emphasized that the focus of the investigation should center on the unidentified DNA found on John Binet's clothing, asserting that until proven otherwise, the donor of this unknown DNA should be considered a suspect. Similarly, in 2016, Gordon Coombs, a former investigator for the Boulder County District Attorney's Office, raised doubts about completely exonerating the Ramseys. Coombs highlighted the ubiquitous nature of DNA shedding, cautioning against clearing individuals solely on the premise of touch DNA, especially in light of a crime scene that wasn't initially secured. He deemed it a stretch to absolve someone under such circumstances. Additionally, Stephen E. Pitt, a forensic psychiatrist engaged by Boulder authorities, criticized Lacey's public exoneration of the Ramseys, characterizing it as a significant affront to Chief Beckner and the dedicated detectives who had tirelessly worked on the case over the years. Two prevailing theories circulate regarding John Benet's demise, with one centering on familial involvement. Initially, Boulder police directed their focus almost exclusively towards the parents, John and Patsy Ramsey. According to Greg McCrary, a retired FBI profiler, there exists a statistically significant likelihood, approximately 12 to 1, that a family member or caregiver is implicated in a child's homicide. Law enforcement noted the absence of forced entry, but observed indications of staging, such as the ransom note. The Ramseys' perceived lack of cooperation further fueled suspicion. The Ramseys contended that their reticence stemmed from apprehensions about the investigation's thoroughness regarding potential intruders and the hastened targeting of them as primary suspects. One hypothesis suggests that Patsy, in a moment of fury following a bedwetting incident, may have inadvertently harmed John Bonet and then strangled her to conceal the events, mistakenly believing her to be deceased. However, there is no documented history of Patsy displaying uncontrolled anger. Furthermore, John Bonet's brother, Burke Ramsey, refuted claims of any abusive behavior, 
stating that they were never subjected to physical punishment. Strangulation, theoretically, could have served as a diversion to mask other elements of the assault and murder. Burke, aged nine at the time of John Bonet's passing, underwent at least three interviews with investigators. The initial two interviews yielded no cause for concern. A review by a child psychologist indicated the presence of healthy, caring family relationships within the Ramsey household. Boulder Police Chief Mark Beckner affirmed in a 1998 interview that Burke was not implicated in his sister's death. Similarly, in May 1999, the Boulder County District Attorney's Office reiterated that Burke was not a suspect, as investigators had never considered him as such. On April 27, 1997, the Ramseys placed a newspaper ad offering a $100,000 reward. Three days later, following more than four months after their daughter's discovery, they underwent their first formal interviews at the Boulder County Justice Center. In 1999, Colorado Governor Bill Owens publicly urged the Ramseys to cease relying on their legal representatives and public relations team. A Colorado grand jury convened in 1999 and voted to indict the parents. The indictment accused them of two counts each of child abuse, alleging that they knowingly allowed circumstances endangering John Bonet's life, resulting in her death. Notable experts, including DNA specialist Barry Sheck and forensic expert Henry Lee, testified during the proceedings. However, on October 13, 1999, then-District Attorney Alex Hunter declined to sign the indictment, citing insufficient evidence for prosecution. This decision left the public with the perception that the grand jury investigation had reached no clear conclusion. By 2002, the statute of limitations on the grand jury's charges had expired. The grand jury's decision to indict was only made public on October 25, 2013, upon the release of previously sealed court documents. In September 2016, CBS aired The Case of John Benet Ramsey presenting a group of experts who speculated that Burke may have inadvertently struck his sister with a heavy object, possibly a flashlight, following a disagreement over a piece of pineapple. They proposed that the ransom note was an effort to conceal the circumstances surrounding John Bonet's demise. In response to the program's claims, Burke Ramsey's legal counsel filed defamation lawsuits against CBS, the program's producers, and several participants. The alternative perspective posited is the intruder theory. Law enforcement and prosecutors pursued leads indicating potential intruders, partly prompted by an unidentified bootmark discovered in the basement room where John Benet's body was found. Initial individuals of interest encompassed neighbor Bill McReynolds, known for his portrayal of Santa Claus, local reporter Chris Wolf, whose then girlfriend implicated him as a suspect, family housekeeper Linda Hoffman Pugh, and Michael Helgoth who died by apparent suicide shortly after John Bonet's demise. Extensive DNA testing was conducted in hopes of matching DNA recovered during her autopsy. In a 2003 defamation lawsuit tied to the case, Wolf v. Ramsey, wherein the Ramseys publicly named an early suspect, Judge Julie E. Carnes remarked, There is virtually no evidence to support Wolf's theory that the Ramseys murdered their child, but abundant evidence to support the Ramseys' belief that an intruder entered their home at some point during the night of December 25, 1996, and killed their daughter. Detective Lou Smith, who investigated the case, concluded that an intruder was responsible. On the night of John Bonet's death, two windows were left slightly ajar to accommodate electrical cords for outdoor Christmas lights, alongside a broken basement window and an unlocked door. Smith postulated that the intruder gained entry through the broken basement window. Although critics have questioned this hypothesis due to the presence of undisturbed cobwebs and foliage surrounding the grate, Smith believed the intruder incapacitated John Bennett with a stun gun before taking her to the basement where she was ultimately killed and a ransom note left. Former FBI agent John E. Douglas, hired by the Ramsey family, endorsed Smith's theory. Smith, convinced of the Ramsey's innocence, resigned from the investigation in September 1998 shortly after the grand jury convened against them, yet continued his work on the case until he died in 2010. Author Stephen Singular, in his book Presumed Guilty, 1999, revised 2016, cites consultations with cybercrime specialists to propose that John Benet drew the attention of child pornographers and pedophiles associated with the child pageant circuit. Singular contends that the investigation excessively fixated on the Ramsey parents 
impeding exploration of alternate scenarios. He suggests that the Ramses were not culpable for the murder, aside from potentially exposing their daughter to sexual predators unwittingly. Singular speculates that this rationale elucidates why the grand jury refrained from recommending the indictment of the Ramsey parents for murder, opting instead for charges of child abuse or endangerment due to placing their daughter in a precarious situation. It was revealed that there had been over 100 burglaries in the Ramsey's neighborhood in the months leading up to John Bonet's murder. Additionally, there were 38 registered sex offenders residing within a two-mile radius of the Ramsey's residence. In 2001, former Boulder County prosecutor Tripp DeMuth and Boulder County Sheriff's Detective Steve Ainsworth advocated for a more vigorous investigation into the intruder theory. Among the individuals identified as suspects by Detective Smith was Gary Howard Oliva, who faced charges of two counts of attempted sexual exploitation of a child and one count of sexual exploitation of a child. In June 2016, as reported by Boulder's Daily Camera, Oliva, a registered sex offender, was publicly implicated as a suspect in an October 2002 episode of 48 Hours Investigates. The Killing of John Bonet, The Truth Uncovered, aired by A&E on September 5, 2016, concluded that an unidentified male was accountable for John Bonet's demise based on forensic DNA analysis. Forensic DNA and scientist expert Lawrence Kobolinski stated in the documentary, an unidentified male committed this crime. Former Denver prosecutor Craig Silverman revealed that the district attorney's office, while investigating pedophiles, pursued the intruder theory. The Ramses established a relationship with district attorney Mary Lacey and her office, which drew criticism from figures such as the city's mayor, Leslie L. Durgan. Silverman remarked, Once you have conceded the possibility of an intruder, I don't see how any Ramsey could ever be successfully prosecuted. Gordon Coombs, who joined the office as an investigator under Lacey, disclosed that while they were testing John Bonet's clothing for touch DNA, Lacey strongly endorsed the intruder theory and discussed it with staff. Although not directly involved in the case, Coombs indicated he was instructed not to dissent from the theory, fearing repercussions on his employment. It just seemed weird the whole premise of this attempt to influence the entire agency, he stated. On August 15, 2006, John Mark Carr was apprehended in Bangkok, Thailand, after making a false confession to the murder of John Bonet. A 41-year-old schoolteacher, Carr, alleged that he had drugged, sexually assaulted, and accidentally killed John Bonet. However, authorities clarified that they found no evidence linking Carr to the crime scene, as reported by CNN. Carr's confession contained only basic facts already known to the public, and lacked any additional convincing details. His assertion that Jean Bonnet was drugged raised further skepticism, given that the autopsy revealed no drugs in her system. Additionally, forensic analysis showed that Carr's DNA did not match the DNA recovered from Jean Bonnet's body. Lynn Wood, the Ramsey's family libel attorney, initiated defamation lawsuits against multiple individuals and entities involved in reporting on the case, starting in 1999. One of the earliest suits was against Star Magazine and its parent company, American Media Inc., on behalf of their son in 1999. The Ramseys and their associates also filed defamation suits against unnamed media outlets. In 2001, a defamation lawsuit was filed against the authors and publisher of John Bonet inside the Ramsey murder investigation, 2000, which was settled out of court the following year. John and Patsy Ramsey faced defamation lawsuits arising from their book, The Death of Innocence, 2001 brought by individuals named in the book who were investigated by Boulder police as suspects. These lawsuits were defended by Lynn Wood and other Atlanta attorneys, resulting in their dismissal. In November 2006, a friend of John Ramsey, Rod Westmoreland, filed a defamation suit against an anonymous internet user who had implicated Westmoreland in the murder. During a September 2016 interview and in the case of John Benet Ramsey documentary, Forensic pathologist Werner Spitz accused Burke Ramsey of killing his sister. In response, Burke filed a defamation lawsuit against Spitz on October 6, 2016, seeking $150 million in damages. Later, on December 28, 2016, Burke's lawyers filed another civil lawsuit against CBS, Critical Content LLC, and seven experts and consultants for defamation, 
seeking $250 million in compensatory damages and $500 million in punitive damages. A judge denied CBS's motion to dismiss in January 2018, and the lawsuit proceeded. In January 2019, the lawsuit was settled to the satisfaction of all parties. John Benet was laid to rest at St. James Episcopal Cemetery in Marietta, Georgia, on December 31, 1996, alongside her half-sister, Elizabeth Pash Ramsey, who had passed away in a car accident nearly five years earlier, at age 22. Patsy, who died of ovarian cancer at age 49, in 2006, was interred next to her daughter. By the close of 2021, Genetic DNA testing emerged as a crucial tool in unraveling the long-standing mystery surrounding a heinous sexual assault and murder case, marking the 25th anniversary of the tragic event. Boulder authorities expressed optimism in employing genetic DNA testing methodologies to apprehend the perpetrator. The city's police department announced their active exploration of genetic DNA testing processes, buoyed by the collection of 1,000 DNA samples and 1,500 pieces of evidence linked to the crime. As of December 2021, meticulous analysis of nearly 1,000 DNA samples formed a pivotal part of the evidence. Leveraging substantial advancements in DNA technology, authorities conducted extensive searches, processing multiple suspects through the system to identify potential matches. The Colorado Bureau of Investigation, CBI, elevated their efforts by updating over 750 reference samples with cutting-edge DNA technology. Furthermore, collaboration between the Boulder Police and CBI aimed to ensure the accurate comparison of DNA profiles between existing samples and newly uploaded ones. In 2022, John Ramsey advocated for transferring his daughter's case from the jurisdiction of the local police department to an independent agency equipped with advanced DNA testing capabilities. Ramsey launched a petition urging Colorado Governor Jared Polis to intervene and entrust DNA testing decisions to an unbiased entity, free from the entrenched involvement of the Boulder Police Department. Ramsey underscored the transformative potential of DNA testing advancements, expressing hope for resolution in the long-standing cold case of his daughter. Ramsey lamented the underutilization of available technology in his daughter's murder investigation, citing a series of setbacks including false investigative leads, unfounded conspiracy theories, and a barrage of accusations against nearly all parties associated with the case.